All right, welcome back to a new touch designer tutorial. And in this one, we will look at creating generative shapes. So really just abstract shapes in combination with uh, grids. And yeah, this is a very dynamic and flexible network as it's based on uh, different shapes and different instances and different noises and stuff. So um, then we're also adding a lot of post processing to this. So it's really, uh, there, there's really a lot of different outcomes. So the cool thing about this, every time I press one, it creates a completely new um, generative, yeah, or generated shape. And um, we can uh, just have a look at what kind of shapes we can create here. So these are just really based on some, some uh, geometry, like rectangles, triangles, and circles. And then we also have some grids. So I can uh, get rid of the grids here by just not rendering this. And then we just have these sort of shapes where I can, for example, just go up with the blur here. And then they're really just these round shapes or if I get rid of the blur uh, we have these really defined geometric shapes working together um, and I can I can also again add this blur let's go down with it and uh, again add some grids I can also get rid of the uh, limit here and then again it looks quite different so we're basically just making a lot of different uh, channels here for instancing and we, we just have a very simple setup. So every time I press one, it creates new seeds. And then we're just adding these post-processing effects to, to really make this look better. All right, so as usual, I will rebuild this whole network with you together and let's get started. Okay, so I'm just gonna delete everything and let us start with a keyboard in, chop, because uh, I actually want to, yeah, be able to press one on my keyboard as I showed you and create a new number every time I do that. So we can really just do that with a count chop. We don't really have to change anything. We could technically add a limit and then just make it a loop uh, till two th like, I don't know, thousand or something, but that's not really necessary. I'm just gonna add an null here and I'm gonna call this seed. I might make it bigger and also press C to give it an, uh, like a color because uh, this is basically what everything is sort of based on. From there, I'm going to, no, I'm just gonna leave it that way. And I'm gonna create a grid because we wanna base everything on a grid. So I'm just gonna add a grid sop. I'm gonna go down from my rows and columns to like eight by eight. I can just copy this parameter and pass the bind here because we actually always want to have the same rows and columns. And I'll show you why in a second. I'm gonna add a null here and call this pause for position, make it active right click display options and show the points and the wireframe just so I sort of have a bit, bit of a better overview of what my grid actually looks like. From here I'm going to add a sop to chop and then from the chop I'm going to add a chop to top. And uh, now I want to change this to RGB and fit to square and because I'm fitting it to square uh, I actually as I just said I always want these to be the same because if they're not, uh, the amount of pixels here is just gonna look wrong. And uh, for instancing, we always need to have the same amount of instance data, right? So we have 64 points here and we need to have 64 pixels here as well. Okay, so I'm gonna build a little render network here, our render setup, just so we can get started with the instancing. So I'm gonna start with a rectangle swap. And from here, I'm gonna add a transform and just go down with this uniform scale to like 0.1. And then I'm gonna add a geo from here. We definitely also wanna have a camera. I'm just gonna make this a bit bigger. So it's sort of, it's sort of different than the geos because we're gonna copy those. And on my camera, I'm gonna go to view and change this to orthographic. Then I'm gonna add a render top. And from the render, I'm gonna add a null and just call this BG as we always do. I'm gonna go to common and change this to 1024 by 1024. Let me just play this in the background. Let me also add a Fong material here and drag this onto the geo. I'm gonna go up with my constant to, so it's white. Actually, let's just leave it black. Um, what I wanna do here is turn blending on. Okay. Right, so let's turn instancing on on my geo here. And uh, let's also go ahead and just copy these two times. And then I'm going to get rid of the rectangles and add a circle instead. Just going to copy the circle and put the first one here, second one here. 
And on the first one, I'm going to change my divisions to three. So we have a uh, triangle. And on the second one, I'm just going to go a bit higher with my divisions to 50. Let's turn off all these viewers. And let's turn off that viewer. And let's copy this parameter of the uniform scale and paste the uh, bind here. So we, if we change one uniform scale, we're also changing the others. So right now we only see a circle. That's because the, the round circle for some reason is a bit bigger than the rectangle. So I'm just going to go down from my radius to like 0.7. So it's sort of more, more of the same size. Right, let's select all of these three geos. And let's use our pause null here uh, as the translator P and select P0 for X and P1 for Y. So now we have a grid of uh, our three different shapes, even though we can really only see two. Um, so yeah, what we want to do now, first off, I'm just going to make a white background here, transform, and then um, just change this to white, comb over background color on. And uh, yeah, it's a bit nicer. Just gonna actually get rid of this. No, <laughs> I want to explain you something. Right, we have um, we have a an eight by eight grid here with three different shapes on every point. And what we want to do now is we want to select different, like only only a few instances of these are supposed to be displayed or visible here. So what what we can do for that, and we have prepared our chop to top here, which is great because now we can use this to create a noise which will uh, automatically grab the correct resolution. So I'm just going to go to output and change this to noise. Go to my common, change this to nearest pixel. And um, what I want to do now <coughs> is go ahead and uh, just act actually sort of leave things as they are. One thing I might want to do is go up with my amplitude and go down with my offset. And then I'm going to add a limit. Again, change this to nearest pixel, go to quantize and change this to round and then actually to floor and then one. And now you can see we, we're only selecting like a few of these pixels. So we only have like six pixels here now, which is great. And now we, we can just use the, these values to only display a few of these uh, circles here. But first um, I wanna do like a bit of a setup. So I'm just gonna turn this off now. And um, what I want to do now for every noise, and I'm gonna we're gonna just copy this for a lot of times. Um, every like for every noise that I'm creating here, I want to have a different seed. So we have set up our seed here, so I can just grab this. But for it to be different, I can just do plus me dot digits. So this little expression here, that just means it's just gonna add like whatever number is here. So if I copy this, you can see it's automatically a different noise. So it's a kind of nice trick to, to work with that. <coughs> uh, so every time I press one now, it's gonna be a different noise. Cool. And now I'm gonna add null and just call this like alpha zero. And I'm just gonna copy this two times. And you can see we have now three different noises. And I'm gonna go to my geo here, geos. And for this third one, uh, the first one, I'm going to go to my instance two page and use this as the color P. Same here, so using the second alpha null and here the, the third one. And I'm just going to select all of these and select R for alpha. So now if, I, if we have a look back here, you can now see we're only selecting a few of these instances to be displayed. So this is already kind of fun. You can see some of these overlap. I personally don't have a problem with that. You can probably do some compositing here to to uh, get rid of that, to change that, but I don't really, I don't really care in this example. Okay, so uh, now we want to create two more channels. So the first one is rotation, and this the second one is going to be scaling. So I'm just going to copy uh, the first one here. Oops, copy paste. And what we want to do here <coughs> is um, add a math. And I'm just going to change this to nearest pixels again. And what I'm going to do here is change this to 360, like a full rotation. And I'm going to change this to round and then 90. OK. And um, actually, let me change this to 45 for now. 45 degrees, basically. I'm going to change this uh, name to road 0. 
And I'm just going to copy and paste this again two times. And just do the same thing as we did before. So I'm just going to select all of these, go to instance page, and use the first one on here, second one on here, and the third one on here. And just select all of these and rotate Z, select R. And now you can see they're all being like sort of rotated around. Let me actually change this to 90. And you'll, you'll uh, obviously you only see the rotation for the triangles because if you change, uh, if you rotate a circle, you can't see that, right? If it's not, if it's a perfect circle and the same of rectangles if you, ch if you rotate it 90 degrees. But we're going to add scaling now and then you can definitely see that better. So I'm going to, uh, again, copy and paste this. Drag it down here. And what I'm going to do first is ch turn monochrome off. I also don't want to have a limit. And I want to change this to like three. So we're only, or actually four. So scaling four. I'm going to change the name here to scale zero. And I'm again going to copy and paste this two times. Then I'm going to again select all of these. No, actually, just select the first one. Put the scale on here, put the second scale on here, and the third scale on here. And then select all of these. And we want to use R for X and G for Y. So now you can already see it sort of looks like Bauhaus or whatever, some kind of design style. I don't know. Looks cool though. Maybe brutalism. I don't know. Yeah, so that's really the, the basic setup here. So basically for every channel, for every uh, one of these geos, we have like a, an alpha, we have a rotation and a scale, and all of these are different noises. So and, and also based on seeds that we're basically changing every time we press one. So it's really quite a dynamic network. So let's make this look a bit more interesting before we before I show you some um, grid magic. <laughs> Not really magic, but yeah, grid stuff. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna add a blur. Before that, I might actually want to move out a bit of my camera. Now on my blur, I'm just gonna go up a bit more. Like this maybe, um, maybe two and twenty, and then I'm gonna add a limit. A limit top, go to quantize and change this to round and then one. And then you can see we get these really nice round round shapes. There is some kind of yeah, kind of glitchy stuff on the like or you know this aliasing. So um, what I want to do is at the very end here I want to add an anti alias. Oops, it's the wrong thing. Anti alias and change the quality to ultra. So uh, you might not see this on the recording, but you're definitely going to see the difference on your machine. So it's really quite important when you do this kind of trick. So that's really the basic. And of course, you can just go higher with this. And then you really have these completely abstract, unrecognizable shapes. And if you go down, it's really just what we're inputting here. You can clearly see what, what the workings behind this is are. <laughs> Um, yeah, we can go further, we can just push this limit over here, and we can add another limit here. Go to quantize and let's change this down here, quantize position to round and then like 0 0.03. And then we could add another blur after that. And then let's just go up with it. So yeah, again, that kind of makes a difference. And the, the looks and you can obviously change these, this limit. You can also go bigger with the steps. And I don't know, it looks interesting, right? So I'm going to get rid of this for now. And uh, what we can also do is add a transform after this limit. And go down to scale slightly, like maybe 0.8. Then we can add a comp here, composite. And let's just use the, the, the blur here, put that in here, and change this to subtract. And uh, okay, this looked better before. <laughs> well, okay. Maybe just use that. Yeah, it looks a bit better. But yeah, I don't know. I just want to show you that you can mess around with this more. But it looks kind of weird now. Well, anyways, there's a lot of things you can do here. 
let me now show you how you can work with grids. So I'm just going to add a grid sub. I'm going to change the rows and columns to like, I don't know, 4 by 9 here, something like that. Uh, for, let's do 4 by 7. I'm going to add a switch sub. And I'm just going to copy this grid two times and put that in here. And um, on the second one, I'm just going to go higher with this, so maybe like 7, 12. And on the third one, I'm going to go like 3 by 2, something like that. Then I'm going to add a null. No, we don't actually need a null. We can just add a geo from here. Geometry comp. Again, actually, no. <laughs> let's just copy and paste this one. And let's input that into here. And you're going to see everything turns black. That's because we're, we're basically just instancing um, these filled grids. They're not really grids. We're not seeing them as grids. We're just seeing them as <laughs> like a rectangle or whatever. Um, so what I'm going to do is add a line mat. Put that on here. Now, this is actually white. So let's go to our line and let's just change this to black. Both of these. And what we might want to do now is go down with the blurring. So we don't have as much blurring going on. And uh, let's actually get rid of that too. And what's important here to do is to uh, go into an align and comment page and also turning blending on. Otherwise, it, it looks kind of weird. I mean, it's interesting too, but I prefer it this way. So now you can like go up with the blurring a bit more. Yeah, looking good. One other thing is well, that we can do here. We can add a noise chop, like another one. Let's go to our channel and change this to samples and then to zero. So basically, the, the, the usual way you might think about or you, you might be used to getting just one sample here is to just turning time slicing on and that works. But the problem is that we have a moving channel. We don't act, we just want to have like a static value here. So you can just change the start and end both to zero. All right. So what I want to do here is um, change my offset and amplitude both to 0.5. Then I'm going to add a math and change the integer to round and the range to two. Then I'm going to add a null. And let's just call this like grid, grid seed. And uh, why am I changing this to two? Well, the thing is we have a switch here, which allows us to select an input between zero, one and two. If I go higher, it's gonna show me an error because we only have three inputs. So let me use this on here. And so now every time I press one, no, actually we need to connect this seat to this noise as well. So use this on the seat, do it like this. And uh, so now every time I press one, it also selects a random thing here. We might actually just want to change the type to random. Okay, so now we're basically just telling it, okay, look for a different like grid every time. Let's actually make these, show these. So now you can see we have three different grids that we can choose from, and that just makes for even more variety and when we like press one, <laughs> basically. All right, yeah, I really like this one actually. To make this look even cooler, we can add a noise here. Change this to, no, we can just leave it as add and then we can change this to random. Go down with the amplitude and especially the offset. Yeah, maybe like 0 0.1, 0 0.05. So really quite subtle uh, grain. You probably can't even see that very well. Something like this well, it makes it look even nicer. Okay, so just mess around with all these post processing effects. Mess around with um, different inputs. You can obviously use different shapes here as well. So I'm just using the very basic ones, but you can use any of these. You can, for example, get rid of the limit here as well. And I really like this too looks really cool. Then they're like not rotated 90 degrees, but like, you know, any degree. We can also change this to 45. So you have di diagonal lines as well. 
What you can also do is, for example, go to the math here and change this to like two, and then you have these, the rectangles are always gonna look more like a line, so you can even go to three, or something like that. And um, yeah, you can show the, the circles here too. You can not show the grids very easily, just always by turning on or off the rendering. Yep. And uh, obviously, yeah, the blurring. Blurring is probably the most important post effect here. So definitely mess around with that. You might even want to use a Luma blur and some noise, things like that. You can also change the grid here. So maybe like a 10 by 10. You just have more shapes. Or maybe just a 2 by 2. No, it doesn't really work. 3 by 3. Also nice. More spars. Is that a word? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> right, anyways. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. And thanks to everybody who is supporting me on and Patreon. If you also want to support me and have some exclusive content and just be a nice person, <laughs> then you can become a Patreon as well. The link is in the description. And I hope you have a wonderful week. And I'll see you in the next video.